In this video, you'll see how to set up automatic exports of third-party data from AWS Data Exchange. With this feature, you can automatically copy newly published revisions to an Amazon Simple Storage Service or Amazon S3 bucket. Save time and effort that would otherwise be spent on manual exports or dedicated ingestion pipelines and configure naming patterns to store exported revisions in a structured way. AWS Data Exchange makes it easy to find, subscribe to, and use third-party data in the cloud. Let's start by going to AWS Data Exchange Heartbeat, a sample data set provided to subscribers for testing purposes. You first need to subscribe to the product. For the purposes of this demonstration, we have already subscribed to the product, so let's check it out. Once you have subscribed, you can open your subscription and then open your entitled data set. This product contains a single data set stored in the North Virginia region. We'll use the simple destination option. Let's select an S3 bucket to use as the destination for automatic exports from this data set. For our purposes, we already have a bucket set up. Next, we'll need to explicitly grant AWS Data Exchange access to the S3 bucket. A sample bucket policy is provided that you can use to export data automatically. Let's copy this policy and add it to the bucket's permissions. We'll simply paste in the policy and save the change. Now that we've successfully added the bucket policy, let's return to Data Exchange to finish setting up the auto export destination. For this example, we'll continue without adding an encryption key. We have successfully added the auto export destination and can see the format in which the data will be exported. The heartbeat revisions are being published approximately every minute. Let's see if the data is being added to our S3 bucket. Inside the simple export folder, we can see a folder containing the revisions. Next, let's set up another auto export destination to demonstrate the advanced destination option. We'll specify the same S3 bucket as before. Let's quickly return to the bucket to copy the name of the folder we want to use. Now we'll go back to Data Exchange and paste in the folder name. Next, we'll curate the key naming pattern. To learn more about Amazon S3 object key naming guidelines, we can select this link. We want our naming pattern in the year-month format. Let's go ahead and append dynamic references to each. We must also append the asset name or asset ID. For this video, we'll choose Asset Name. We now can see a preview of the format in which our data will be delivered. Let's add the bucket destination. Now let's go to the S3 bucket to look for the files being delivered. Here's the year folder per the naming pattern we set up. Here's the month folder. Finally, here's the data that has been delivered. If you want to stop receiving these automatic exports, you can stop them by choosing the Remove Auto Export Job Destination button from the Actions menu. Automatic exports can also be created and deleted by calling Event Action APIs, as shown here. Let's take a look at the syntax for the Create Event Action API. You can see that the API accepts the encryption and S3 bucket destination parameters along with the key pattern and dataset ID. You can also call this action via the AWS Command Line Interface, or CLI. You've just seen how to set up automatic exports of third-party data from AWS Data Exchange. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.